What if I told you there was a musical with only four characters, a very simple set, no orchestration, just a piano for the music, and in fact the four characters don't even all meet each other, and yet that this musical is one of the deepest, most substantial, fascinating musicals that makes you self-reflect on what's important in life that there's ever been made. That's what Ordinary Days is all about. Ordinary Days is a musical that's just about what's important in life, what actually brings happiness and fulfillment. Like I said, it features four characters, and these four characters are kind of paired up. You have a newly dating, cohabitating couple, Claire and Jason, and you have these two other people who actually meet in the show and become friends over a long and somewhat tumultuous journey. That's Warren and Deb, and their relationship is a lot more interesting and unorthodox. So I'm gonna actually start with them. So we meet Deb and Warren as individuals at first. Deb is a graduate student taking Modern Lit, and working on her master's thesis. She eventually wants to actually make her own major and become like a pioneer in that field. Whereas Warren is pretty much completely the opposite. He's basically the male equivalent of what you would call a manic pixie dream girl. That's the trope in a lot of stories of the character who is like so whimsical and sees so many magical things in tiny moments to the point where they're not real people, basically. That's the point. He's basically the male equivalent of that. He's a uh, house sitting for an artist who was arrested and he's trying to carry out his vision by just spreading these notes on pieces of paper all over the city, pasting them all over lampposts and walls and handing them to people. And he's like shocked that nobody understands his artistic vision. So you have these two characters that are pretty much completely opposite. You have Deb who's very practical and very success oriented. She has a very clear five-year plan of where she wants to be by then. And Warren is more into the romantic side of things, but they both do have something in common. They both really want to contrive their vision onto the world. Now these two characters meet in a very unusual situation. So Deb loses her book that has all her thesis notes somewhere in the city you know, needle in a haystack. And as fate would have it, Warren actually finds that notebook and it has a little email to contact if you find the book. So he contacts Deb and instead of saying, you know, let's meet at Starbucks, he wants to meet her to give her back her notes, but he wants to meet her at a very specific Monet painting at the Met Museum. Why? Because he has this image of staring at a Monet painting that he really likes and someone just walking in and noticing him and them starting this beautiful New York fairy tale friendship. But what happens is Deb actually comes in after wandering around for like 20 minutes not able to find him but before even giving her her book he kind of like tells her exactly what he wants this moment to be i think this is neat you're coming in here i'm looking at this painting it's perfect we're gonna have a great friendship and of course she completely bursts his bubble and says look you effing weirdo i just want my book i wish we could have met at a starbucks or something i know i'm, I'm giving a lot of detail on this one scene but i promise i'm not gonna do this for the whole show but like ultimately he gives her her book and then she's like so happy to have it she like almost forgets how mad she is at him and then they have coffee and there's a really funny song where they're like asking each other questions and they're re revealing to each other how different they are from each other and I don't want to give all the details so I want to like leave that for you to listen to and I'll leave a, a playlist in the description for you to listen to but basically the whole rest of the show is them slowly realizing how they have a lot more in common than they think. Deb to me is the most interesting character of the whole show because she goes through the longest journey of her character arc. She goes from being really neurotic to being understanding that happiness of life is right here. Like right here in this moment. Now these two characters never actually meet the dating couple. And what's interesting is that <laughs> the Warren and Deb storyline could be its own musical. But it's interesting that they also have this other pairing of Claire and Jason. And it's really fascinating because it seems to be a different journey altogether. But it's really not. And I'll get to that in a second. So they're a dating couple. Jason is moving in and... Claire is saying how she has a hard time moving her stuff to make room for Jason, which is obviously symbolic of their relationship. And she feels like she has to let some things go. In the song where they're moving in, uh, he refers to some of her things as old junk, which is actually sentimental items that we find out later. A okay, mild spoiler, I'm not going to give the whole detail, but she had a relationship in the past. She lost that partner, and she has some things of his that she doesn't want to let go of. And Jason, I don't even think he's aware of this until the end of the show. So he's not aware that it's that important. So he's like, why don't you just get rid of this stuff? And without telling him why, she's just like, I want to keep it. And that's kind of like her journey throughout the whole show is her wanting to hold on to her memory of her past partner. Even though she does love Jason, she just has a hard time emotionally letting go of that person and then clinging on to Jason because what if she loses Jason in the same way? So Claire's journey is interesting. I happen to think that Jason mm, probably is the least interesting character of the show doesn't mean I hate 
him. And he's played by Hunter Foster, which is great. And he's funny, but he's he's just kind of simple. Like, we kind of know who he is. His beginning and end isn't all that different. And the thing about Jason is he's a very linear thinking person. Like, when they're at the Met, and they're at the Met the same day that Deb and Warren are at the Met, which is the funny thing is that these characters kind of cross over, but they never directly meet. But at one point he says... Give me a painting where a face is a face. Don't give me theories about negative space. Very opposite from Warren in a lot of ways. Very straightforward. But the one thing that he definitely knows is that he loves Claire. He doesn't even love living in New York City. He just loves her and he does it because he wants to be closer to her. So that's the... I'm probably talking really fast too. I'm not noticing that. I, I've listened to this musical and thought about it for many years. So a lot of this is just coming out of me. I wrote a script and I've barely been looking at it because I'm just kind of talking off of what I know from it. But other than like the overall story, the music itself is just gorgeous. It's just like really nice minor key changes and great harmonies at times. There's some really good standalone songs as well. You have a song uh, Get Out by Claire and Calm from Deb, which is kind of them both having almost like a nervous breakdown. Those songs are really poignant turning points for those characters. There's also the song Fine, which is a really funny double act kind of comedy song. There are a lot of really good ballads like like uh, Favorite Places, 100 Story City, and I'll Be Here. Actually, I want to go back to Calm because I didn't talk enough about that. It's a neurotic song about Deb just freaking out over the fact that her professor doesn't like her master's thesis and she's having kind of a life crisis. And the way the song's written, it's almost Sondheim-like. It's very fast-paced. There's a lot of really clever lyrics and rhymes. One more thing about it is it is very quintessentially New York, especially the song I'm Trying, which is basically about Claire and Jason reminiscing on when they first met, they did a whole bunch of stuff all over New York, really taking in the city and how they just like don't do that anymore. And there are other scenes that are just kind of funny inside jokes for people who've lived there. Okay, <gasps> that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I think I've talked about the main things I like about it. I just love how minimalistic it is, how simple it is. Like I said, just a piano, but it's performed and played so beautifully, it might as well be a 20-piece orchestra. It's so rich with goodness. Yeah. Ordinary Days is about letting go of your idealized image of what the world should be, what reality should be. It's about letting it go and accepting the present moment. And no, that does not mean not having any ambition. It doesn't mean not getting out of bed. It means you do that, but you do that from a perspective of contentment. It just means you get rid of all the neurotic parts of your ambition. If you learn to appreciate the beauty of ordinary days, it just deepens your ability to appreciate life. And that's really what Ordinary Days is about. And I love how it tells it in two completely different ways and puts it in one musical. Adam Guan, you genius. This musical unfortunately never made it to Broadway, it was just off Broadway, but it was so beautiful. Audrey McDonald actually did a song in one of her albums. And I really hope you go ahead and give it a listen. I hope you appreciated my discussion about why I like it. Let me know if you like it. If you hate it, tell me why. I'll probably disagree with you, but that's okay. I guess you can just tell me. Leave a like if you appreciated this video. Click subscribe if you like these little theater discussion videos. I try to upload every week, but uh, I am doing school and I'm thinking about doing a trip to decompress because my life has been kind of school, work, this channel, and another project I'm working on and I feel like I need to get out of the house. So I might be doing that next week. I may not upload next week, sorry. But if you do like these kind of videos, go ahead and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching Keep Loving Theater, and I will see you next time. And it's just got such beautiful music. <laughs> and it makes you sneeze. I guess I'm allergic to it.